What's up, East High? Welcome, Welcome back, back to, to Tower, Tower TV. TV. It's Cooper. And it's Cole. We have an awesome episode for you all today, but first, I have a question for you. Sure. Why do you never see elephants hiding in trees? Why is that, Cooper? Because they're so good at it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Dora and Jasmine put together a really cool blinded art teacher drawing challenge. Let's take a look. We have gathered the wisest art creators in the world here at East High School to have them compete for best artist. We had the students of Sopkins, Miss Kim, and Miss Rosewitz classes to take a vote on who they think won the contest. I'm Miss Rosewitz, 2D design, 3D design, and art medals. I'm Miss Sopkin, I teach drawing, painting, and photography. I am Miss Kim, and I teach ceramics and sculpture. First, we asked the teachers to draw dolphins. Next, we asked them to draw a garden. Finally, for the most challenging round, we asked them to draw the Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland. Here are the results. Who do you think won? Definitely not me. <laughs> Ms. Kim, for sure. I think Ms. Sopkin. The art students voted that Ms. Wozwich won the challenge. Sign off for Tower TV. This has been Jasmine and Dora. Wow, that was a really cool and great piece. Thanks again to Dora and Jasmine for putting that together. Hey, Cole, did I hear that you went ice fishing recently? 100% I did. Quite peaceful, just the ice, the fish, the shanty and one tall, musically gifted man. Mr. Attaway. <laughs> I guess we'll find out. Anyways, let's hand it off to Eva, Ula, and Cole for the next segment. Welcome back to Tower TV. This is Eva, Ula, Cole, and our special guest, Mason. In honor of the winter sports season, we decided to try ice fishing. Today we are on Brittingham Bay. We're looking for some big biters. Hello and welcome back to the Fish Corner. I'm here with Mason. Are you ready for today's fishing statistics? Yes, I am. Ice depth is five inches. Water temperature, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Ooh. How do you feel about that? That's chilly. That's chilly. What would you estimate is the best ice depth for fishing? Uh, probably like enough ice so you don't fall through. How many inches would you say? Like five. That's exactly what today is, five inches. What's the technique you're going for today? I don't really know. We're just gonna wing it. So yeah, I, uh, I came down here. I was just walking around the lake, looking at the fishermen, and I, I met these two cats, Cole and Yule. And they were telling me about uh, their fishing. I said, they're doing it all wrong. They're doing it all wrong. What you gotta do is you gotta put the put the jig right at the top of the water, just like here. And then you wait for the fish to come right up to it. And then right as it comes up, you grab the fish. I started ice fishing when I was just three weeks old. My grandpa took me out 
he actually used my toes as bait and stuck me right in the hole and this big northern grabbed my foot um, yeah i mean ever since i've just been hooked hooked on ice fishing oh my gosh i got something <laughs> No way. Wild petite sardines? This is crazy. I got Gilbert here. Gilbert decided to bite. I'll give Gilbert a little kiss. I'm gonna put Gilbert back in the hole. <laughs> Thanks for joining us on our fishing journey. Signing off for Tower TV, this has been Cole, Ula, Eva, and Mason. I think that piece made a real splash. Wouldn't you agree, Cole? Yeah, for sure. I gotta tell you, it was a real good time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But you know what isn't a good time? The construction. Yeah, it's been a lot so far this year, but I'm happy we've seen some progress. And I'm quite curious what's in store for the future. Luckily, Will, Tess, and Cam have just the answers for your very questions. Hi, East. Today we got to show a special behind the scenes tour of the construction process currently underway on the third floor. This is um, my second time working in, a, in an active school. It's unique in that we have to be conscious of students and staff, so we have to be careful about when we're making noise, that we're conscious of any critical times like testing days um, or just main athletic events, you know, big events at the school that we want to be conscious of and try to limit our interruptions if at all possible. We uh, enjoy the fact that uh, there's a lot of flexibility being given to us just to kind of work inside of these confined spaces that we have our partitions built, um, but we also appreciate your understanding when we do need to kind of travel through the, the public spaces or, you know, corridor areas. We all know about the kind of congested drop-off area on 4th Street and now on 5th Street, and so uh, we appreciate your sensitivity and and just uh, your flexibility as we as we add to some of the traffic. So please, you know, watch before you're crossing the streets. Um, watch as you're driving around the school, um, and we're we're asking our tradesmen obviously to do the same thing. So um, it's a challenge, but but we're uh, we're up to the task and. Hopefully thus far, uh, the admin team and then the students and staff here at East feel like we've been a good partner um, to continue to work with you guys as you uh, use the facility and as we constantly renovate it during the school, school year itself. So right now I'm standing next to the new access point that, that helps serve our third floor renovation area. This provides us with a location separately from inside the school to hoist materials and equipment up to the renovation area. A unique solution to a challenging access uh, and logistics problem we have here at East. The gender neutral bathrooms have been moved. One is at the end of the third floor in the science wing, and the other is on the second floor by the study hall room. Signing off for Tower TV, this has been Will and Cameron. Whoa, thank goodness I have all that information. It will make navigating the halls so much easier. Like they say, one small step to becoming college and career ready. <laughs> they do say that, Cooper. Speaking of spicy careers, do you know Sean Evans? Why, yes I do. I love the show Hot Ones. Well, you're in luck. Red hosted a Hot One spinoff show, Spicy Twos, right here at East High School. No way! Yes way! I'm so excited! Take it away, Red and Rye. Hello, my name is Red. This is Spicy Twos. This is Mars. Say hi. Hi. To begin, these are the things that we will put the multiple sauces, if they are in liquid form, onto. The first sauce we have is spicy ketchup. Tink. Oh, that's very not good. It like wants to be barbecue sauce really bad. What is your favorite part of teaching? Teaching gives me the ability to have an impact on people that I wouldn't otherwise. Spice too. Our second spice is the spicy garlic pepper sauce. I'm gonna try not to stain my clothes. Sanitary. Don't like it. It's like the chunkiness, it's at oh. sensory disorder. Why did you choose decorations in your classroom? The string lights are because I have um, chronic migraine disorder. Memes I mostly just think are funny. Be kind. Punch Nazis. Next up, we have the spicy Pringles. Mm. Mm -hmm. So what's your favorite class to play in Dungeons and Dragons? Oh, Druid, hands down. I get to turn into a big old bear whenever I want. I just really like animals. We're bringing the chips back. Our third spice is Scorned Woman, which is sure to have a kick. Mm. 
How did you get into the job of teaching in the first place? I had just kind of assumed that I would have to stay in the closet if I wanted a job. I became a teacher so that young queer kids can see that we become queer adults. And to top it all off, we have ghost pepper mustard. I'm sorry if I have to immediately spit this out. It really don't taste good. I could taste it insulting my mother. What sort of insults? It said I had no maidens. We need to do drawings now. I'm oh wait, saying, we're doing drawings? I knew it was Guy Fieri, but like I used to say Guy Ferrari when I was very small. I'm gonna draw a really awful drawing. Napkin drawing, I couldn't press too hard. I'll treasure this forever. Signing off for Tower TV, this has been Rye, Red, and Sam. This tastes horrible. Wow, my mouth hurts just watching that segment. Those Scoville levels were off the charts. Indeed, my friend. Try cooling off with a cool segment about a cool guy, Milton McPike. Ah, uh, yes, named after the Milton McPike Fieldhouse. Precisely. Take it away, Kajada and Noel. Walking through the East Halls, one may be encountered by a powerful presence outside of the main office. Former East Principal Milton McPike has been immortalized in this display case, passed by students every day. Mick Pike has become a well-known name, not only around the East community, but the nation as well. Mr. Mick Pike was born in Jacksonville, Illinois in 1939. After high school, he attended Truman State University. In 1962, he was a 12th round draft pick for the San Francisco 49ers. Before moving to Madison, Mick Pike taught and coached sports for 11 years in Illinois. In 1974, McPike moved to Madison and before coming to East, he served as Vice Principal at West for five years. In 1979, McPike took on the role of Principal, replacing Dale Watt. He acted as Principal until 2002, becoming East's longest-running Principal with a run of 23 years. In that time, McPike left quite the impression on East and the community. Well, I wasn't raised by my biological father. I was raised by my stepdad, who's a great dad. But he's what I would have pictured I always wanted my dad to be. And it's the craziest way to say it, but he was essentially everybody's dad. He just knew us so well. It was, it, I mean, you would think that a principal with uh, hundreds of kids in a school would, like, honestly not know everybody's name, and a lot of us would be just the number, but it wasn't that way. He somehow knew everybody. McPike received a lot of love from his students, but also accumulated plenty of accolades. Under his leadership, East earned status as a National School of Excellence in 1989. The next year, he was named an American Hero in Education by Reader's Digest. He also held the title of Wisconsin State Principal of the Year in 1997, and in 2007 won the Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award. In 2008, Mr. McPike sadly passed away after a battle with cancer. When we found out he was sick and he was dying, a lot of us was devastated because he was one of those people that we thought would live forever. We never in a million years thought he would die at such a young age. In 2018, Madison Central Park was renamed McPike Park, and our field house was named the Milton McPike Field House in his honor. Melissa McPike left a long-lasting impact and legacy with his students and everyone he worked with. His hard work lives on through the memory of East alumni across generations. Take what he taught us and run with it, man. Signing off for Tower TV, this has been Kajada and Noel. Wow, those East history segments never failed to blow me away. So well done and thorough. I agree. They're incredibly informative and peaceful, kind of like our next segment with Ross, Elsa, and Lydia. What do we have slated next, Cooper? A wonderfully talented group of musicians performing an East's own Tiny Desk Concert. Wow. Inspired by NPR's Tiny Desk Concerts, we decided to highlight East's musical talents. This Tower TV mini table performance features students Mio, Cypress, Anna, and Z with their original song, Ode to Time. <laughs> I'm 
Signing off for Tower TV, this has been Lydia, Elsa, and Ross. We return with a view on the wild Cooper Smith. And then I said, I'm not going to put my device off and away. Ah! Whoa, 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 man. Stick to the script. Wow! I feel so lucky to be a part of a school that values and encourages the arts as much as East does. Me too. Even beyond music, East High School never fails to showcase its students' creativity and passion. I'll leave this to you, Cole, to talk some more about our next segment featuring Skills USA and the ornament that they delivered before winter break. Back before winter break, I checked in with members of Skills USA, a woodworking club here at East High School. This holiday season, they decided to build and distribute over 100 holiday ornaments to the houses and businesses surrounding East High School. Um, I was inspired to participate in like doing the ornaments and distributing them to families around East because I really wanted to show some of the good that happens at East High School and just be part of something that benefited the community. This was the first year that the holiday ornaments were distributed by Skills USA. Through a long process of laser engraving, letter writing, packaging, and distribution, the members of Skills USA spread holiday charm throughout the Emerson East neighborhood. Feeling in a neighborly mood, the members of the club felt obligated to share the festivity. I think doing this really helps the public image uh, of East High School and people surrounding it with very positive, just, we like to give back. And then I thought it was a cool idea because giving people, uh, giving people gifts around holiday time really inspires me. It shows that they care. It shows that they really want to help out and thank our neighborhood for who they are. And it really shows who our students are too at the same time. Signing off for Tower TV, this has been Cole. How incredible, amazing dedication by those members of Skills USA. Couldn't agree more, Cole. Speaking of dedication, Fox really put in the work in the last episode's Hide and Seek feature. In fact, he did so well that he earned his club a feature in this month's episode. Indeed he did. You know, Cooper, I signed up for a Hide and Seek competition once. Forgot all about it. I won first prize. Wow! That's fantastic. Without further ado, Red Rye and Sam will be holding up their end of the deal and doing a feature on Anime Club. Take it away, Red and Rye. If you remember from last episode, Fox won the Hide and Seek Challenge. And now, Red, Sam, and I are going to Anime Club to see what they're all about. My position in Anime Club is the public relations or PR officer. So I kind of get the word out about Anime Club. I take part in like the cosplay aspect of it. Like if we have like any like cosplay meetups or activities, we take part in the Anime Club. It's doing many contests and just like having a great time doing activities. Some of the activities I take part in Anime Club is helping come up with the agenda. I think that my favorite moment from the time I've been in Anime Club has to be last time we actually went to a convention. My favorite moment in Anime Club is getting to know all these amazing people. I think people should join Anime Club because it's a chill place to hang out. You don't really have to know anything about Anime Club to actually join. It's a really fun community, especially for people who like kind of watch anime or even if they don't, if they cosplay, if they don't. It's just a chill place and everyone's very welcome. Oh, my all-time favorite anime. All-time favorite? I'll probably go with probably Silent Voice, like anime movie. I'd have to say One Punch Man is so far my all-time favorite. The anime I am currently watching is called Ulti the Walk. Anime Club meets in room 1014 every Thursday from 3.45 to 5 p.m. Signing off for Tower TV, this has been Red, Sam, and Rai. I gotta tell you, Cole, I really enjoyed your company hosting this episode of Tower TV. Yeah, what a privilege to be able to report on such a wonderfully diverse school. The friends we made, the memories we'll cherish, the boys we lost. And with that, this episode almost comes to a close. Make sure to stick around for announcements, hosted by Cam. Come find the perfect handmade pottery gift for your loved ones at the Valentine's Day Art Sale and Ceramics Fundraiser on Friday, February 10th during periods 4 and 5. 
11th and 12th graders with a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or above will be invited to join the National Honor Society at the beginning of February. Applications for new members are due March 1st. If you have any questions, there will be a Q&A in room 3023 during lunch and after school on Tuesday and Wednesday this week. The Centennial Alumni Art Show will be on display in the Ray Edwards Gallery from March 13th through April 21st. Do you know an artist who graduated from East that would like to be a part of this once in a lifetime exhibit? Please help spread the word about this very special show so we can have as many former Perkholder creatives represented as possible. Are you interested in becoming a peer educator in mental health awareness? You should join PeerShare, a new club at East sponsored by UW Madison. It'll meet Tuesdays at lunch in room 2032. Snacks will be provided. Choir audition for the 2023 to 2024 school year will take place during lunch and after school today through Thursday in room 1001. If you are interested, please sign the sheet outside of the choir room. No need to prepare anything. It will take about five minutes. If you want to learn more, check out Per Golder Choirs on Instagram. Are you hungry but too tired to walk to Quick Trip? Did you forget to pack a lunch? Come get your snacks at the concession stand by the field house. Cash only for now. Proceeds go into funding for scholarship and clubs that work the concessions. Are you struggling with your writing assignments? The Writing Center can help. Come to room 2401 on Thursdays at lunch for peer supported help on all writing. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch Tower TV this morning. I hope you all have amazing days.